painful road to recovery. May Shidiak has a face known to millions of television viewers. A photogenic, influential face. A Barbara Walters of news in the Middle East. A celebrity. Fashionable. Always opinionated. Often very controversial. But May Shidiak became the news six months ago in one murderous act. I uh, heard a blast and uh, I felt it at the same time. I was still awake. I uh, saw like a uh, black uh, snow falling over me. A bomb ripped through her SUV. Against all odds, though, she survived. Barely alive, May managed to crawl from the wreckage, her hair ablaze in a fireball of flame and smoke, her body cut to shreds. I saw my hand attached to my arm with a small piece of, uh, of skin, but uh, late, so I hoped that they could save my, uh, my hand. But the doctors could not save May's hand or half her arm. The bomb took most of the left leg too. May was badly scorched and peppered with shrapnel. I still have uh, pieces of metal in the face near the cheek here and uh, uh, all over my body. Saudi Prince Walid bin Talal, a billionaire shareholder in the Lebanese Broadcasting Corporation, flew May to France in his private jet, putting much of the huge medical costs for his star talent. May is a woman of courage, easy to like, with a powerful will to live. I have to do everything with just one leg or just one hand. And it's not always that easy. It's a kind of a new dance. <laughs> May is learning to regain her mobility at a special rehabilitation center outside Paris. He's putting so much pressure on me. He's making me crazy. Oh, God. Defying the bomber with all the might she can muster. It's so painful over here. Oh. I imagine I have the enemy in front of me and I have to kick him. <laughs> the enemy, May claims, is the Syrian regime. Lebanon's powerful neighbor, taking revenge, she claims, on its critics and foes like her. No proof, just to our guessing. But uh, you know who is the enemy in Lebanon for the time being? Uh, it's Syria, and uh, we were people talking against Syria. Syria was the subject of May's last show before her car blew up. The topic, a string of assassinations of prominent Syrian critics in Lebanon. In hospital, she is given moral support by Saad Hariri, son of the former Lebanese Prime Minister Rafik Hariri, who died last year in a still unsolved bomb attack. And Jibran Twaini, another outspoken critic of Syria, became yet another bomb victim when he was killed just two days after this bedside visit. But May is rising from tragedy, determined to walk and broadcast again. She's unapologetic for her hard-hitting views and grits her teeth at every challenge. People who will see this will consider it very easy, but it is not, I swear. It looks so stupid, but I have to make a lot of effort. Yeah. Her would-be killers could strike again, but that won't change her politics when she goes back on air. Never. It won't be me. It won't be me. 
I'm, um, I'm a fighter. But you can't always be so upbeat. There must be times when you feel despair. Yes, of course. There is time when I feel despair. There is time when I cry. Uh, when uh, I, I feel pain, a lot of pain. I, this is my fifth month of treatment. I have my own way of doing things. Yes. She is trying to master the now difficult technique of controlling this prosthetic hand through the stump of her arm. The, the easiest way for me is to feel that I still have my own fingers and I'm opening and closing them. Like for, So, this is the way of doing things. My own way. I don't know if it's the only way. <laughs> this is May Shidiak's high-tech artificial leg. It'll look much more lifelike when finished, but May wants to walk as soon as she possibly can on these five-inch high heels. She wants absolutely to, to walk with that. She's uh, very, very uh, determined to that and we have to deal with that, and I hope we'll find a solution, but I'm not sure it will be really possible. Uh, but May says uh, she won't give up easily. So I would like to be able to put uh, high heels with my long dresses, and uh, so <laughs> this is it. Stubborn, independent and focused is how May's family describe her unbending attitude. This is her, her character. She will not change. She is, she is our pride. She is a strong fighter. She is a survivor. And May, I don't think she will change. This is May. The Institute helps some 2,000 amputees each year. But amid this environment of grim determination, May Shidiak's case has won her friends and recognition. She gives us some... Um, energy to face um, our difficulties now in this uh, hospital. Uh, she's an example for us. It's agonizing to watch, but May's new body parts are starting to work. Gentle. Slowly. Gentle. Close. Watch your head. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so, I've done enough efforts. This is my new hand, one of my new hands. <laughs> this is my electric one. But is that, it doesn't look much like my own hand, but it's functional. She is a Maronite Catholic, learning more day by agonizing day. But sometimes in May's darkest moments, she thinks death might have been preferable to life. Not now, though, as she visits the center of Paris. Wanting to look and feel like the woman she was. I will feel uh, so happy at that time, but I think uh, things have changed. I won't be the same again, even if I want to. Sometimes, she says, the exercises feel like climbing mountains. Triumphant when a summit is scaled. Hey! <laughs> it's the first time I do it. Really? Yeah. And not the last. I think uh, uh, some angels are protecting me. I hope they will uh, keep on doing it. Every single step of her difficult way. Brent Sadler, CNN, Valentin, France.